does not start after age 40. <laughs> a lot of people think that midlife is something that happens after you get up the hill so far, and at age 40, as they say, it's all down the hill. It's not. Carl Jung, who is an analytical psychologist, I did quite a bit of research on him last semester, he actually says that midlife starts right around the age of 35. Oh. And this is why. And, 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 and believe it or not, there's a book out right now that says my midlife at 30. That someone went to a midlife crisis at age 30. Wow. How does midlife happen so young? Well, here's what happens at midlife. You have your childhood, and in your childhood, you know, you're bouncing around, and you're going to school, and you're trying to fit in, and do all the things that the other kids are doing. You're receiving correction from your parents. They're telling you what to do. And then you get into your teen years, and you kind of start coming into your own. You start making your own decisions, and you start figuring out what direction you want to go in your life. And then in your 20s, now you're grown, and you've made some decisions, and you're living with certain decisions, and you're trying to adjust to those decisions. But when you're 20 years old, there's some fight in you. Yeah. When you're 20 years old, you think you can conquer the world. Yeah. When you're 20, 21, 22 years old, the world literally is your oyster. You start planning out your life and you start executing the things that you set up to do. Right. But somewhere around the age of 30 years old, life starts settling in on you. You start living with the consequences of the decisions that wow. you made when you were 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. And as we start thinking about what's going on in our lives and we start looking around at the things that we've set up, we start trying to figure out, can I continue to keep this pace? Wow. Can I continue to live like this? Is this really God's very best for me? And some of us, if we're very, very honest with ourselves, right around the age of 35, say, hold up, wait a minute. What is going on here? This is not quite what I envisioned for my life. When I was 12, I wanted to be a lawyer. When I was 14, I wanted to be a doctor. I had all these dreams, I had all this stuff set up. But somewhere around between the ages of 18 and 22, you said, which way is the easiest path to get to my goal? Because life starts getting very difficult. And see, psychologically, we don't fully develop uh, in the in, in the reasoning part of our brain until 23, 24. Mm -hmm. So when you ask a college student or a high school graduate, what do you want to do with your right. they, they are making decisions from where they are. So you and I, both of us together, made decisions from where we were. We were the product of what our parents told us was true. We're the product of what our community said was norm. So the decisions that we made, honestly, may not have even been our own. They may have been decisions based upon our sociological right, right. adaptation, That's right. what we right. thought was the right thing to do. Uh -huh. Can I be honest in here? That's right. That's good. I was told that if I go to school mm -hmm. and get good grades mm -hmm. and graduate mm -hmm. and go to college, right. I was going to be successful. That's right. Yeah. That's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I went to college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. We're not going to talk about the grades. <laughs> right, right. It's not the grades, two years. Right, right, right. But right. catch up those last three years. Notice I didn't say I finished in four, that, that fifth Amen. year. Because the first two years, I was trying to figure it all out. How I many of you were with me trying to figure it all out between 18, 19, and 20? Okay. So then we end up making decisions prior to 40 that start coming in on us right around the age of 35, 40. The reality, well, we have to come to grips with the life that we've created. And some of us are still in that process right now regardless of what age. <laughs> Our life starts to shift just a little bit. Our perspective starts to shift just a bit. We come, to, we come face to face with our, with our Adam 1. In Genesis 1, 23 through 26, Adam is formed by God, and he's put in a garden, and he's given dominion over all the plants and animals and everything that his foot treads upon. He has dominion over He's in a perfect relationship with God. He's expanding. He's naming animals. Doesn't that sound like you? 
Remember 19, 20 years old? And, you know, just doing everything. Capable of everything. That's Adam in Genesis 1, 23. He has full dominion over his life. He has energy to execute things. Adam 1 is what um, David Brooks calls him in, in, in the road to character. Adam 1 uh, is, is basically who we are when we're growing up. We have full opportunity to do everything, and we really focus on our external more than we focus on our internal. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay, so when we're in high school, we want to be in the popular crowd. We want to be in the in crowd. You don't want to be the wallflower that no one invites anywhere, right? You want to be normal. You want to have the right clothes. You want to have the right shoes. You want to go to the right places. You want to say the right things. You don't want to be an outcast. And quite as kept, your parents don't want you to be an outcast either. Right. You don't want anyone to think anything is wrong with you. And so like Adam, we try to establish dominance whenever we're younger. We try to establish ourselves and we get to the habit of adorning our external. We get into the habit of focusing on what we look like and what we appear as to other people. We're very, very uh, self-conscious, but we're more so interested in how people are perceiving us. We're not really introspective. We're not thinking about who we are. We're thinking about how other people see us. When we get to Adam 2, though, we, when we encounter Adam uh, in Genesis 3, 6 through 24, now you know Adam has two creation stories in Genesis, right? We're aware of that. The first one, he's in full domination, nothing's wrong. When we get here, he has Sister Eve. Sister Eve has talked to the serpent. The serpent has given her the fruit. She has eaten the fruit, and she has said, here, try this. And he eats the fruit, and all, everything breaks loose. All of a sudden, Adam is no longer walking around naming animals in charge, dominating, and I'm the man. He's no longer like that. Now Adam is like, you know, walking around looking a little nervous. Adam, where are you? Lord, I'm naked. <laughs> Who told you you were naked? Yeah. What have you done? Mm. Well, I, I saw that these twigs. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam is on a different wavelength now. He's no longer the man in charge. He now is starting to think of himself introspectively. He sees that he has flaws. He sees that he has issues. He sees that he is not the creme de la creme. He's coming to a very sobering reality. He's having to get inside of himself. And if we're going to make a midlife shift, we have to shed our Adam one. All right. Because that's the Adam of our youth. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. It's a childish yeah. way of thinking, mm -hmm. quite That's frankly. It. Where you're only concerned about what people think about you. You're only concerned about how people perceive you. You're only concerned about if people like you. You're only concerned about not making people uh -huh. upset. Uh -huh. You're only concerned uh -huh. about fitting in. You're Ooh. only concerned about wearing the right shoes with the right hat, with the right bracelet, with the right this and the right. Ooh. You gotta let that go. Teach. When you make a midlife Teach. shift. Yeah, when you yeah. make a midlife shift psychologically you start on your own looking mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. Some stuff just doesn't matter to you anymore. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. You don't get a witness? Yeah. Witness. Yeah. witness. You're just not worried about certain things. Right, right now. Right now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. God creates our souls this way before we even get here. Mm -hmm. He has created us so that when we enter into the body, we need Adam one, we need that ego in order for us to get through our childhood. Because if we are just, you know, introspective and in ourselves all the time, we may become narcissistic and we may become navel gazers. And all we do is think about ourselves if we're too introspective at a young age. But when we get older, and we pushed our way through to the place that we were supposed to be in our young adult years, once we get to midlife, we have to start pulling back from that thing because the world is not about us anymore. The world then becomes about the internal landscape that you have inside of you that needs your care. 